Hey, hey, welcome to the Summit Host Hangout Podcast, where you'll learn how to host a high converting virtual summit that leads to your biggest signature offer launch yet. I'm your host, Krista from Summit in a Box, and today we are going to do a comparison of virtual summits and free challenges. And this is kind of like the third episode in like a really spread out series where I am trying and comparing different strategies. So in episode 183, I compared free bundles with summits. In episode 195, I compared free summits with paid conferences. And today we're going to compare a virtual summit and a challenge. And I have run, uh, actually, as of outlining this, I had run one of each over the past like three months. So I had results to compare, experiences to compare. It was all really fresh. So it was the perfect time to outline this. And I'm finally getting it to you probably a year later. Better late than never, right? But I'm excited to compare these strategies because I know on the surface to a lot of people, they look very similar, but they are very different. And there are key differences like in the purpose of the strategies, they just serve two totally different purposes in your business. And we are going to get into that today. So we're going to cover what a challenge is and kind of what my definition of it is and what the difference is between that and a summit. We will talk about why I decided to run a challenge and have used them consistently and will continue to use them consistently in my business. We'll talk about my favorite and least favorite things about the challenge strategy, how the results compare to summits, and then how to know which strategy is right for you. So before we dive in, you know, to the full breakdown, I want to just take a minute to give you my definition of what a challenge is, what challenges that I run look like. So you kind of have that context as you're going in here. I'm sure, uh, you know, you've seen people run challenges in different ways. So I just want to make sure that what I'm talking about is really clear. So specifically, I am talking about what is generally a five-day challenge. I have run anywhere from three to five-day challenges. And with this strategy and the way it's typically done, you are really the only one involved in putting it on. So with summits, you have other speakers. With a challenge, it's really just you. So you're hosting a challenge around a specific topic that your audience needs help with. And that positioning is important, right? It needs to be something they need help with. It needs to be something you can help them make quick progress on. And over the course of a few days, you are delivering trainings and action steps in the form of challenges, even if you don't call them that, to help your audience learn what they need to know and and to make progress each day. Uh, Usually those trainings happen happen live. That's why I like to do it. But I've definitely seen people just share like pre-recorded videos because that feels better to them. That's totally fine. I like to include places in my challenges for people to submit homework so I can give feedback on those things and award prizes, have those good touch points with people, get them engaged, but not everyone does it that way. And then historically, I have seen most people just use like Facebook Live as their way to stream their videos into a Facebook group. And that is what I have done up until my most recent couple of challenges where we used Zoom instead, just to see if we could increase that interaction since we had seen uh, engagement in our Facebook group, specifically with videos, start to drop off. I've also seen people just use like Instagram Live. So you can do whatever makes sense for your audience. And people, again, just like host a Loom video on the, like they click the link and you go to the Loom page, right? It's not anything pretty, but it does the trick. So the point is each day you're delivering a training and an action step in some way. So your audience is actively making progress towards a goal. And then on the last day is usually a webinar with an opportunity to buy your offer. So ideally, each of those action steps they took during the challenge are leading them one step closer to being ready to buy your offer or, you know, helping them maybe with the first couple steps in your offer. So they're excited and making progress and want to continue. So to give you an example, We have hosted the same challenge here for Summit in a Box six or seven times now. And the goal of it is to get people started with their summit planning since getting started is something people reference as a struggle all the time. Whenever someone joins our Facebook group, they're asked like, what's your biggest hurdle with your summit? And I would say probably half the time it's like getting started. Maybe half the time is an exaggeration, but it happens a lot. So over the course of the first four days of this challenge, we go over like mindset to make sure they're not doubting themselves. We set goals so they get excited and see what's possible. We choose an audience and topic since those are really important steps that people get wrong. So I want to be able to give them feedback. And then we choose a date and create a basic timeline to give them some momentum. And because I truly believe that if you don't have a date on the calendar for your summit and a timeline around it, it's not going to happen. So that's another way I can both set them up for success and get them 
them moving with that forward momentum. From there, they have what they need to either continue the process on their own, but our program is the natural and very helpful next step for those people who want to continue. So it's a really natural transition. As for my trainings, I try to keep them around 10 to 20 minutes long, although I will say incorporating Zoom, those, these last couple times definitely made them way longer than they used to be since you know I'd stop to answer questions that came up in the chat. I'd get distracted as we went. People had more questions at the end and that's fine with me. I love that interaction. And then each day I would have them go to our Facebook group to submit their homework in a thread. And then I would give them feedback unless they said, you know, they don't want feedback. Sometimes I just cheer them on if I didn't have any feedback to give. And then whenever they uh, like entered that homework, they would get entered for daily prize drawings, which they love. And then again, on the final day, we open a special offer to one of our programs. So that is kind of my definition of challenges and how uh, they work in my business, like logistically. So I want to talk a little bit about why I host challenges when summits are my thing. So like I mentioned at the beginning of this episode, summits and challenges and really bundles, webinars, everything, paid events of any kind, all of those are such different strategies with very different purposes. I think a lot of people see those things as all interchangeable, but that's just not the truth. They're not interchangeable. They do not do the same thing for your business. So over the past few years, I've hosted about two challenges per year. I would say since uh, 2017, there have been times where I've done more than two challenges per year as well. Uh, I think we're on number 13, 12 or 13 at this point. The reason that I do them all the time is because once you have the first one done, they are so easy to rinse and repeat without a lot of planning ahead of time. Like I can decide I wanna host a challenge, get everything ready, promote it and run it all in the same month if I really want to, unlike a summit. That's not gonna happen with a summit, right? In In a challenge, you don't have to line up speakers or anything like that. There's not a ton of tech to set up. It's all there and ready to go and the timeline is a lot shorter, especially after that first one. And then for me, challenges have been a really great way to both serve and convert our existing audience rather than just me relying on evergreen sales and like people, like expecting people to take action and know exactly where to go once they're ready. Summits are also great for that among other things, which we'll get into. But when my primary focus is to re-engage and convert our existing audience quickly, challenges are just a really great alternative to summits for that specific thing. Uh, Our audience also loves the connection with me and the opportunity to work alongside each other. uh, And that's what a challenge brings. So it's always really great for engagement and excitement on their end as well. So as for what I like about challenges, uh, we've done it before. So it's really easy for me. It is easier than anything like a summit bundle, conference, anything that's going to require you to round up speakers or anything like that. I do like also want to give this little disclaimer. I keep saying how easy it is, but it wasn't necessarily that quick and easy the first time. My first ones weren't a success out of the gate. I'm actually going to host a training in a couple weeks where you're going to see my first challenge brought in zero dollars and you're going to see how they like slowly grew until I finally figured it out three years into hosting them. So I'll give you more details for that training at the end. It's pretty juicy and shares all the numbers, but like it was not easy from the beginning. It's just very easy for me now. I also really like challenges because I truly get to help people overcome a sticky area of the summit hosting process so they can get started really confidently. And like I say truly help people and I feel like, you know, webinars, workshops, those kinds of things, those are great. And I always try like no matter what, even if the goal is a sale to make it so valuable, but there's just something extra about a challenge where you are like truly like, all right, you're going to do this today. Come back tomorrow and we'll take the next step. You're just serving them so well and really supporting them throughout the process that I just love it. It's just like, it just feels much better to me than a lot of like the one-off like webinar type strategies. Something else I like about challenges is that one of our team members often points out that our audience really just wants chances to talk to me and get their questions answered. And a challenge is a place that they can do that. And it works for me because there are limits or around what they can ask and get my direct feedback on, right? It's not a free for all where I have to sit and ask any question about everything. It's like, hey, we're doing this training. You can ask questions about this training. And I I just like that there's limits around it. And then, like I said, I really like that it converts our existing audience. So it's a fairly quick way for us to get a cash injection while engaging our audience and providing value. Like it it just does all the things I want it to do. So I'm, I'm a big fan of challenges. And even though I do love them for the reasons we covered, the goals are very different from a summit. And you might be listening right now being like, wait, how? Like, oh, that sounds great. What else do I need? 
in most cases, when you're looking to make like a really big splash in your business, a summit is what you want to do. So I want to kind of break down some of the primary differences between the goals and outcomes and strategies and challenges versus summits, not to convince you that either is better than the other. They're both like better based on the goals and your capacity and things like that. And I'm going to cover that in the upcoming training as well. But I want to kind of break down some of the biggest differences here. So the first really big difference is list growth. Okay. If you need list growth, a challenge isn't where you're going to get that. Okay. A challenge is not going to be nearly as much of a list builder as a summit. And I feel like there are some people out there who do teach it as a way to grow your list, but I've just never seen it have that kind of effect for us without spending a bunch of money on ads. If you have a big ad budget, cool, great. You can turn anything into a lead generation method, right? But like to give you an example for this recent challenge, we grew our list by a little bit, but only 50 of those people were not from paid ads. So without ads, we would have only grown our list by 50 people through affiliates and like our social media. Okay. With our summit, it was over a thousand. So that's a pretty big difference. Like, and then also another strong point of a summit is that you don't need to run ads to grow your list by hundreds or thousands. But like I said, for this challenge, we would have only brought in 50 without the ads. And I'm not complaining about those 50. That's wonderful. I'm just saying that if you're looking to grow your audience in a really big way, a challenge is not going to do that for you. So it's a really big difference between that and a summit. Another big difference is connections. So one of my favorite parts about summits is the fact that I get to like engage and nurture 15 to 30 connections through having speakers, bringing them alongside me to promote and benefit through the event. And that also has ongoing benefits because you then have ongoing relationships with those people, which leads to so many more opportunities down the road, right? Podcast interviews, more speaking opportunities, referrals, JV webinars, in-person speaking, like it's, it's just never ending. It, but it's connections that get you more of those opportunities and you don't have that with the challenge. That's just not how they work. Like you could bring speakers onto your challenge, but then you turn your challenge into a summit. So yeah, the challenge just doesn't do that. So that's just kind of another factor I, I sometimes miss when I'm hosting challenges. Sometimes, sometimes I don't miss it, right? I'm like, whoo, no people to manage here. This is so nice and easy. But if your business needs connections and needs you to be networking, a challenge is not really gonna do that for you. And that's okay. It's just not part of the strategy. And then another difference is revenue from the event itself, right? So where a summit makes money on its own through an all access pass without a launch, a challenge doesn't do that. I mean, you could try to add in like an all access pass or host a paid challenge. Let me know how that goes if you do. But like with the general model, it's just your offer at the end that makes you that money. The stakes are a little lower to make money with the challenge because like I mentioned, they're just easier to pull together on a short short timeline, especially once you've done it once. But typically when I launch through a summit, I generate at least the same amount of sales as I do with a challenge just in the LXS pass. Plus we then have the launch revenue on top of it and it just all really adds up. Not to mention giving you the peace of mind that you've already made a profit even before your launch starts is just really nice to have. And that's something I sometimes miss, not so much with challenges because I've done it enough that I trust them, but with other you know, launch strategies where you're not making any money at all before the launch happens. Like when we did our paid conference, I was terrified going in. Like I was not in a good mindset in the live run of like all the sessions because we hadn't made any money yet. We're with the summit. By the time the event's actually happening, we're, we're profiting already, right? And that just is like a nice peace of mind that you don't have with other strategies out there. But yeah, you can you can hear me talk a little bit more about this, like the part where the summit makes you money before you even launch in episode 214 of this podcast. We talk about funding your launches and turning a profit with a virtual summit. So overall, if you're looking for like a relatively quick and easy way to engage, serve and make money from your existing audience, challenges are great for that. Uh, and I also know some people who started with a challenge to get their feet wet with events before jumping into a summit, even though they didn't have much of an audience and knew the results would be pretty low. You could do that. Like for most of you, I would just encourage you like stop doubting yourself. Let's just do the thing that you know will work really well for you if you don't already have an audience. But that is something that, you know, I've seen some people choose to do. I want to get a little more detailed here with a comparison of the results we saw when we hosted these two events back to back. We hosted a summit and then we went straight into planning for a challenge and hosted that a few months later. So again, overall, both of these strategies are very strong, but I just want to give you like a concrete idea. Not too concrete though, because I shared an episode sometime last year maybe even two years ago at this point, I don't remember, about how I'm not sharing my exact numbers on here anymore because it just doesn't feel 
good to me at this point. For me, it puts too much pressure on me to blow reasonable results out of the water to like be impressive on my podcast, right? And then in the past, even when I have blown results out of the water, I feel gross sharing them, like feel like braggy about it. So like both, I I lose when I underperform because I feel like I'm being judged for not being good enough. And then I lose when I overperform because I feel like I'm bragging and like being gross. So like, I'm just over it. I'm not going to do it anymore. So I'm sorry. I'm going to be speaking in percentages and without super concrete numbers here, but hopefully you'll have enough of a visualization with this. So Again, to put it in perspective, these strategies were done three months apart. So our audience size was fairly similar other than the growth we had seen through the summit. So when we did the challenge, our our audience was, what, 1,000, 1,500 people larger than it was with the summit. The only or the one thing that does throw off the comparison a little bit here is the fact that we launched different offers in the two events. In our summit, we actually launched two of our offers, and in the challenge, we just launched one of those. If we would have launched the same exact way in each, like, I don't know how things would have changed, so I just want to put that disclaimer out there as well to be to be as fair as I can. Since there's no connection factor with speakers, I didn't pursue sponsors or anything like that for the challenge. The challenge itself didn't make money. I'm going to leave those things out, and I'm really just going to focus on the list growth, engagement, and the revenue here with this next part. So for engagement, I would say engagement with our challenge was actually higher, but I think that's because I put myself in a position to be able to engage more, right? Like with my summits, I do a couple live videos here and there, and those are great, but like the live videos aren't the thing, right? They're not the main part of the summit. They're kind of like an extra. So when I'm showing up on video live every day during a challenge, and that's the main thing, and then I'm bribing them with prizes and then like, like bribing them to go post in the thread with their homework. Like, of course, that's going to bring up more engagement. So I saw more engagement with a challenge. I think I could have built that into a summit if I wanted to. But like, it's just not a priority of mine to or it hasn't been up to this point to to make summit engagement like match challenge engagement. Although now that I'm recording this, I really want to try it with my next summit. So stay tuned for that. But if you are looking for one-on-one engagement with you, I would say a challenge is a bit stronger there just with a typical strategy. Not to say again, that you couldn't build it into a summit, but it's going to be a more natural fit with a challenge. So I would say engagement was higher with a challenge. As for list growth, list growth was the biggest difference between the two. I did run ads both to the challenge and to the summit. So I'm going to include new registrants only in this calculation, but we saw seven times more list growth in our summit than in our challenge or or as a percentage, the challenge brought in 14% of the new subscribers that the summit did. And that's just because having speakers promoting as a part of your summit is so incredibly powerful that that's where the power is, right? So where I wouldn't really consider a challenge, a list building strategy, a summit absolutely is. So that's a big difference that we saw. And then revenue, I would consider both of them really great revenue generating strategies if you have an existing audience for the challenge to generate revenue with or money for ads, okay? So our challenge, even though it didn't bring in nearly as many leads as the summit, brought in 82% of the launch revenue that the summit did because it was effective at converting our existing audience. So I thought that was pretty cool. That did not include the summit's all access pass revenue, but I thought it was just really cool to separate the launch revenue out itself and see that those two were, were pretty damn close. And like, again, a disclaimer here, we have a decent sized email list. That's why our challenge was able to perform almost as well as our summit. Our email list shows up when I do something like that. So that has a big part to play in the results we see. We would have had to spend a ton of money on ads otherwise to get the two strategies that close revenue wise. So overall, both strategies are really effective at the things they're designed to be effective for. uh, And at least for me, way more effective and they just feel better than running straight ads, spending hours making reels, creating a bunch of other content, doing podcast interviews, all that stuff. Not to say those things aren't worth doing, just that if you're looking for something that will bring results quickly, those things are in it, right? Those things are the things you need to be more consistent with over the the long haul, right? Like we are with this podcast, what, 250 some episodes in at this point. So consistency is key with something like that, but sometimes we just need something that's gonna bring results like yesterday. Overall, both of these strategies are wonderful, but you need to know which is right for you at any given time. I love summits for bringing in a ton of leads, revenue, visibility, engagement, and connections with industry experts all at once. And I love challenges for between summits for keeping engagement and revenue up, right? Between those big bursts that a summit bring. Like they're they're a perfect match, really. The summit brings the people 
and all the other stuff. And then the, the challenge is the perfect way to continue giving them opportunities to engage with you and convert once they've had more time to warm up to you. So I would say a challenge is best for you right now. If you are looking to test a new offer you want to launch, a challenge is quicker and easier. So if you need something to test a new offer with, go with a challenge. It's a lower lift thing, lower risk to you. And then also a challenge is better for you if you have an existing audience and are looking to re-engage them or generate revenue as quickly as possible. And then you can choose either a summit or a challenge if you have an existing audience and you're looking to launch a proven offer, or if you're looking for something to create engagement with your audience, you just need to be a bit more mindful that you build that engagement into a summit. It's going to happen more naturally in a challenge. Then on the flip side, I would say a summit is best for you if you want to grow your email list by hundreds or thousands. You want to generate a bunch of revenue without much of an existing audience or with an audience that you kind of feel like is burned out. Uh, And then if you want to make connections and get visible, a summit is going to be better for you. So I hope this has been helpful. If you want to learn more about hosting challenges, what they can do for you, see more behind the scenes. I have a challenge or not a challenge, a, a strategy session coming up in a couple weeks where we are going to dive really deep into that. I am sharing how I generate about six figures in revenue each year between summits with challenges. I'm breaking down all kinds of details with the 12 challenges we've hosted up to this point. Like you're going to see exact numbers with growth between my first lots of challenges and like you're going to see why there wasn't a lot of growth. I'll show you what the difference is when I kind of turned the corner and started making tens of thousands through my challenges. I'm going to break all of that down for you and you can learn more and register at summitinabox.co slash challenge dash strategy. We'll have that link for you in the show notes. Also, a cha- that training is also going to be really great if you're not sure if a challenge or a summit is the right fit for you. So again, you can go to summitinabox.co slash challenge dash strategy. And then if you've listened this and you're like, okay, challenges sound great, but a summit is the right move for me right now. I would recommend that you dive into our free summit to sales training series instead. If you're enjoying what you're learning on this podcast, you will love the Summit to Sales training series. This free series is for course creators, membership site owners, and group program coaches who need a high volume of leads to hit big sales goals. So your business may be thriving right now, but you need a strategy to keep thriving. And that means having a consistent and repeatable strategy that brings both immediate and long-term revenue and gives you the peace of mind that you have the leads you need to keep making more signature offer sales without burning out your email list. The free Summit to Sales training series will show you how a virtual summit will help you do exactly that. So head to summittosales.com to sign up for the 10 part series available in video, audio, and written format and learn how virtual summits can become your most effective lead generation strategy, cash injection method, and lead to a long-term and reliable increase in sales of your signature offer. So get started on the path to not only continue the success you found, but grow it with the virtual summit at summittosales.com. I hope this episode was helpful and thank you so much for tuning in. For show notes and resources and link that I mentioned, head to the link that you'll find in the episode description to get to all those details. And for now, go out and take action to plan, strategize, and launch your high converting virtual summit or challenge.